Need to boost your credit for an upcoming car loan? If you know you'll finance, smart car buyers plan ahead. Today, we're bringing you 11 tips on how to get those credit scores into tip-top shape in time for your next car loan. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as The Homework Guy and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? Today's video is brought to you by The Homework Guy team, home of super high intensity training for car buyers and a highly intelligent group of auto experts to boot. We're going to teach you a little bit about getting those amazing credit scores. If you appreciate us working hard to bring you up to speed with our great videos and you want to support our efforts, well, there are plenty of ways for you to get on board with us and show a little appreciation. Start by recommending us to your friends and help us get to that million subscriber mark. As many of you might have guessed, members of the Homework Guy team are cash car buyers, but does it mean that we don't care about our credit scores? Absolutely not. We are always doing things to our credit, and today, Elizabeth and I will be sharing with you some of our favorite strategies. Strategies that have worked for our team and many people who have helped over the years to boost their credit or get their credit back on track. A little disclaimer before we start. We're not credit restoration specialists, and we're not trying to give you financial advice. That's a different ballgame entirely. We are simply here to share with you some common sense that we know about credit, and perhaps a few ideas and strategies that you hadn't thought of before. There's a lot more you can do than the basics you'll hear from us today, but these are some of our favorites, and most of us on the Homework Guy team use these ideas regularly, so we know they work. Let's get started. Well, the boss is back. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth, let's discuss why having good credit is so important. First, if you need financing, you need to get an approval for a car loan, right? But that's just a baby step. Yeah, yes it is. When you have good credit, the car costs you a lot less over the life of the loan. Right. And with less than good credit, you can end up paying for your car twice. And a lot of people do, 150% yep. or 200% of the value of the car. It's ridiculous. And high interest rates are another reason that a lot of people are upside down on their car loans when they try to trade it in. And too much of their payments every month is going into that interest. Exactly. So all of us on the Homework Guy team have been doing this a long time, boosting credit, that is. And we've helped many others improve their credit scores as well. And we'll get to hear from some of those people here in the not distant future. So we're going to share some of our favorite strategies with our viewer. And you get to go first, Elizabeth. So right. where do you want to start? First, on-time payment history. This is really important if you want a high credit score. If you want your credit file to say that you have exceptional payment history, even if you use limited credit. And that's exactly what my report says, exceptional yes. payment history. All right. If you leave it up to your memory, trying to remember what bill has to be paid when, you'll likely miss things from mm -hmm. time to time, and that will cost you points on your FICO score. I recommend you set up automatic bill payments and even like a calendar alarm or a reminder. Um, that, like you always do. I know. <laughs> <laughs> then you just have to make sure you have a balance in your account to cover your bills. And those sudden dips from your credit score from late payments can be completely avoided with automatic bill pay. All right, number two, if you have credit card debt or active credit lines, this is really important. You also need to pay down any high balances. Anytime you're using more than 30% of your available credit limit, you're telling lenders you're just not that good at managing the credit that you do have. Right. And you have to keep those balances down. So keep in mind that people with the 800 plus score range, well, those people aren't using more than 10% of their available credit at any given time. There's a little magic to all of that. Number three, get a secured loan. This is one of my favorites and all of us here Mine too. Yep, have done this for years. In fact, I have one of these running right now. A secured loan is simple and you don't have to worry about your credit to get it set up. I put $2,000 on deposit in a savings account or any amount works and then I draw a loan against it. The credit union freezes my $2,000 in the account, charges me a few dollars to write the check and then mm -hmm. gives me their $2,000. This is so easy that you can do it even if you don't have a dime to your you're name. Just, you're trading money, basically. You're trading the money, yep. Mm -hmm. So let's say you pay $1,000 in rent each month. Before you pay your rent, go get a secured loan at the credit union. You don't have to worry because you get the money right back and your rent's going to be paid. Um, but now you have a, a loan working for you and the payments are drawn out automatically and on time. See that? And there's yep. zero reason for anyone to not take advantage of this. And you can let it run for 6 to 12 months and then start another one. Repeat, rinse, and repeat. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Number four, get a secured credit card. Now, this isn't necessarily my favorite, but if you don't have enough credit to get approved for a mainstream credit card like Visa or MasterCard, 
Well, then another option is building credit is to get a secured credit card. It requires a cash deposit, sometimes between two and 500 bucks, maybe even more if you want a larger credit limit because that deposit does set whatever your credit limit is. Okay. Remember what we said earlier, you want to use a little bit, but never use more than 30% of the available credit. So if you put $200 on deposit, never have more than $60 on the card and then pay it off every single month. Use it like it's cash. Yep. People have to remember, if you don't have the money to buy the thing you're buying with a credit card, well then you shouldn't be using the credit card either. It's really that simple. So after you've had this secured credit card for a while, well then you can get a regular credit card, maybe six, 12 months down the road and uh, now you got the ball rolling. Right. Number five, get added to an account. You can ask a parent, a relative, or friend to add you to an account they have in good standing as an authorized user. For this to work, you must know the person has good credit and pays mm -hmm. their bills on time. That's really critical. Yep. What happens on their account also happens to your credits, your credit history. So you want it to be only a good thing and you need them to have on-time payments, low balance usage, and a long-term line of credit. So for example, let's say a parent decides to put their high school graduate on their visa account. The account's 10 years old, they have a 10% credit usage, on-time payment, and I've seen situations where a graduate qualified for a first-time buyer loan right out of high school or college because of the parents helping them build their credit history. Right. Um, and I can't emphasize enough how important it is that whoever you ask, make sure they have good standing on the account already, and if they don't, this can backfire and you can get dinged with bad credit. Yeah, so it's gotta be a good person. Yep. And that's why you choose, You know, if it's a younger person, choose mom or dad or a trusted uncle or uncle, aunt, yeah. somebody. So the other benefit is that if you're a high school or college graduate and you end up qualifying for a loan, this could happen on your own because of this strategy and then mom or dad don't have to co-sign on the loan. So <laughs> mom or dad, that's the reason why you'd want to help. Right, an ounce of prevention, right? Yep. And during the time the child's listed on the, on the credit account, you never have to actually allow them to use the account. Bingo. Ever, okay. Never. So in fact, we advise you to cut out the credit card when it comes in the mail because the account's there for one purpose, to boost their credit score. There's no reason for them to actually be using the account. So you're not putting them on the account to have them use the account. You're putting exactly. them on the account to benefit their credit and that's it. That's it. All right, number six, keep your old accounts open. So if you have old ones out there, even if they're not active at the moment, you want to keep them open. If it happens to be that you stop using this account, that's okay. It still benefits you both in longevity of the account and in reducing your total usage of available credit. Just make sure you're not getting stuck with fees or things like that because in that case, well, then maybe you do wanna close it out. But right. keep those old accounts open. Okay. They help you. Number seven, while you want a diverse credit portfolio, don't go out and open up too many lines of credit and get Correct. used to saying no to department store credit cards. No Target, no Home Depot, no Macy's. <laughs> we don't want your cards. It's just a bad idea to have too many accounts. So stick with loans lines of credit, a Visa or a MasterCard. Department store cards might seem tempting, but they actually hurt you, even mm -hmm. if you make your payments on time. It's not essential credit, and it's usually only available in that specific store. People who have cards like that mm -hmm. can be seen as higher credit risks. You don't want them, so don't do that to yourself. Right, because those cards are typically, you know, lenders are looking at it and go, you got a Macy's card or you got a JCPenney's card or something like that. You're just buying pants and shirts with things like that. Not, not essential things to live with. Right. So you don't need any of those cards. Don't get them. Number eight, we said this already, but it bears repeating, pay off your credit cards every single month. Every month. Don't carry ongoing debt on a credit line, pay off your card balances. And it not only keeps your credit utilization low, which is very important to good credit, but it keeps you from piling up needless debt yep. and debt that you might have a hard time making payments on when you got too much of it. Yep. And then you're right back to square one with bad credit. Don't <laughs> want to do that. No. Um, number nine, if you haven't done it already, sign up to monitor your credit score. That's essential. That's essential. Um, all of us on the Homework Guide team get a credit score update from all three agencies every month. And they all vary a little bit, so you're going to want to look at all three of them. You want to stay on top of it, and these email reminders keep you on top of it. Um, right. So you're going to know where your credit score is at right now and how your credit responds positively to these various strategies we mentioned. So you might decide to use some of these ideas and then see how it impacts your credit. And in turn, you'll be able to encourage others that you know to do the same. So by monitoring your credit, you'll actually know that the things we're suggesting that you do, that they actually work because you'll exactly. see them improve over time. Number 10, if you're out car shopping, don't fill out credit apps at dealerships just because you're test driving 
or doing your homework. Seriously, watch our videos. <laughs> yeah, don't let car dealers bully you into doing credit checks. These are hard credit pulls. Yeah. And if you're not ready to buy a car now and you're letting car dealers run credit on you every stop you're making, they are knocking your credit down every time they do this. Don't let them do it. In fact, also when you turn in your driver's license to go for a test drive, because they'll ask you for it, make your own copies in advance and when you do your copies, black out your birth date as well because your name, address, driver's license, birth date, that's really all they need to do a to, to look your credit up. Yep. So make sure your birth date is blocked out on the driver's license cards that you make or the copies you make. Yep. Uh, number 11. A lot of people don't know this, but if you pay rent, you can add your rent payments to your credit score and boost the positive amount of information reported about you each month. You that's can sign awesome. up for a service like Rent Track or Pay Your Rent. In many cases, getting your landlord or property management company on board will limit the fees you'll be charged, and they should be happy you're staying on top of this. They should be delighted you're doing this because yep. it's A, helping your credit, and then they know that you, of course, are that it's important to you that you're paying your credit on time. Right. It's a win-win. That's right. Anything else you want to share with people about building or boosting credit? Just get started right away. There's, there's no time like the present. You know what? I just have to say this at the end. You know what my credit usage shows on my last credit report I just got? No. Zero percent. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I need to start using some of my credit stuff yeah. again. So no, I, but I believe in being cash fluid and that's how people should be tracking. So be closer to zero than a hundred all the time. Yep. All right. Well, good luck, everybody. I'm going to wrap this up by saying have patience. Improving credit isn't an immediate process. An excellent credit score is often the result of responsible financial behavior over a period of time. Some of the things we shared will start boosting your credit within 45 to 60 days. Others take a bit more time. If you're thinking about a car purchase and you know you're going to need financing, get cracking on doing these things right away. You'll be surprised what just six months can do when all your efforts are in all the right places. If you appreciate the video today, consider giving us that great big thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Include hashtag the homework guy and look for us on your favorite social media platforms out there. We post updates and share videos on other platforms too and answer car buying questions to help you out. If you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, the PayPal and Cash App links that you see on the screen will be easy to find in the description box down below or on our website. Here's the best part. We don't just help car buyers. We use your tips to sponsor great people like Maggie. This amazing young lady works with university students to help them get more out of their studies and ultimately more out of their lives. We enthusiastically sponsor Maggie and she thanks you in advance. Just like the Homework Guy channel, Maggie knows that you change the world by what you do. If you can't do a tip, no problem. Just help us get the word out. The Homework Guy team loves it when you share our videos with your family and friends and encourage others to subscribe to the channel. You can help us get to that million sub mark. And by doing so, you're helping to bring fairness and honesty to the car business. We thank you for that. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter. Until next time, take care everyone. And get out there and kick butt on those credit scores, would you?